This is a review on the Woodmiser LT40 Super Hydraulic Sawmill. It has a wide head. That is an additional feature. It has the 35 horsepower Yanmar diesel engine. This mill is a replacement for my other one I used to have. I had the LT40 wide with a gasoline engine. It wasn't super. Let's go through this mill. This mill was ordered July 22nd, 2020. Um, it took about two months to get it here. And it's fabulous machine. Comparable to my other one as far as, you know, the basic layout. Um, these are the hydraulic arms, so everything unfolds whenever you go on the location. Um, I'm going to talk in this video like you don't know anything about sawmills. Um, this is going to be a 10 minute video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, so this is the power feed. It's twice as fast as the standard. LT40, and you see the diesel engine on it. I'm a 100% portable sawmill. I've been cutting wood for seven years, and I used to cut, I used to pay other people to cut my wood. I bought my first hydraulic sawmill a little over two years ago, and I sold it nine weeks ago, and I purchased this one the day after I sold it. And you gotta wait nine weeks though. This is rough without the sawmill. So we're gonna go through this. This sawmill is raised up right now. I don't have the capabilities of you know running the sawmill in here. I, I can turn the blade on and everything. The head will be completely lowered whenever it's in travel mode. Let's say it's in travel mode. You want to make sure all your jacks are up. I will say based off experience, if you are putting these jacks down, um, if you have these middle jacks down when the saw head goes down uh, at a location, sometimes it's hard to unrelease the pressure on that when the head's over there. So if this saw head is over here and you're on location, go ahead and take all four of these up, leave these front two down, go put this saw head in travel mode and then you won't have an issue with these jacks. People complain about these jacks. They want the fine adjust outriggers, which are like $1,200. Uh, and I'm sure they run into that issue. I've ran into it. Um, there's ways to alleviate that. These are the hydraulic functions to turn the log, to clamp the log, to put the uh, loading arms up. Um, it's in travel mode. This right here is the board return. It's powered right here whenever the machine is on. This right here, let's go ahead and do this. So as you can see, this is the board return. Just do that. So if I was to make a cut, I would slightly raise the blade, which you use this lever, and then I would be bringing this lever back, and it's going to bring that material. And you got to be careful. This is a really fast machine. It's going to bring that material back, and it's supposed to land right here. There's certain instances, you know, I'll use it. I do use it to pull, just because I cut slabs by myself, so I'm in the woods cutting slabs. Um, you know, I cut the tree down, pull the logs out. These are degraded logs and dead standing logs. Um, I like to do selective harvest. Anyway, so I have a big log on this sawmill just to get it off of the cut. Sometimes it's hard to pull it. Um, you can use that just to nudge it so you can throw it on a trailer. The features, you can't really 
There we go. So that's the manual mode, auto down mode, auto up mode, pattern mode. What the great thing about pattern mode is, is you can come into pattern mode, say if you have the LT40 uh, standard mill, you'll be cutting and you'll have, you'll have um, a random width, uh, thickness board on the bed. So after you start cutting all your boards, Sometimes you'll be, have an inch and three quarter board on the bed, and if you really wanted it to be an inch, like all the other boards on top, you put it in a pattern bone, and you're able to cut your cant all at one inches, and your bottom board is gonna be at one inches also. And you can adjust all these different settings. There's lots of different settings. In the auto down mode, just say we're gonna do five quarter material. I'm in auto down. So, you know, this setting, I push two, I can get in a different setting. That's two and a sixteenth. Um, I'm pushing one right now, and it just brought me back to one and a quarter. So after, you know, let's say you do want to change it. Let's say I want to change this setting right here. So what I am going to do is I'm going to push this button up. Let's say, we want it to be one and a half. We just put one and a half. Set down one. When you come in, after you change that, you have to come in here, push manual mode, and you gotta push the up arrow. After you do that, it's going to come in to save. You want to push save once, you also want to push it twice. That saves the setting. So let's go into here. Bam. So now we're at one and a half. Well, actually, I don't want to mess up what I've got going on. So I need to go back to um, and the kerf is already adjusted in this machine, so it accounts for that. I want to get back to one and a quarter. So like I said, we're gonna come in here. Do manual mode. Uh, after we do manual mode, we're gonna push up. Configuration menu, and obviously, if you wanted to set the curve, it would be right there. And to do that, you, you obviously you'd be in manual mode and push the up arrow, and that gets you into this screen. But what I need to do is I need to save that last setting. So I'm gonna come in here, push save twice. I saved that last setting. So we go into auto down. We're at one and a quarter. And there's so many different functions you can do, like so many different, uh, you can plug different numbers in to this machine, like 32 different times. Auto up, if you actually want to go up on your boards and you want to get the same thickness, then you can do that. So that's kind of a brief overview of the HacuSet 2. And... I'm not going to go too far into details. I am making another video of the AccuSet 2. Um, and it will go in depth about it. I'm pretty familiar with the particular computer. I actually used to kind of do the math with the last machine without this computer. So I did have the you know, right bed, uh, board on the bed. So I didn't have uh, wasted material. Um, I'm just going to show you how this, you know, it's loud. Make sure that you want to make sure this blade is not engaged. The machine has three hours on it. I cut a bunch of walnut. Uh, that's pretty much all I cut. That's all I cut is walnut. So this is the LT40 Super Hydraulic Sawmill great machine. It's double the hydraulics as the standard LT40. It was whenever I was trying to get this machine, I didn't have any in-depth videos of this particular machine. Um, this machine cost me $41,052. I bought this machine when it was on sale for $35,000 and then you got to put the uh, additional diesel engine on it. Anyways, I came to $41,052. If you want to buy this machine right now, I think its base price is at 39, and then you got to add the $6,000 diesel engine, and then you need to do the 795 
additional wide head. So to get the wide head, that's an additional charge. If you want to get the debarker, you can do that. I don't like the debarker. The deb debarker, people say it's not in the way. Actually, it is in the way when it comes to you know what I do. And if you look at my other videos of what the logs I handle, um, it's in my way. It cuts a little uh, cut right before the blade and that removes any dirt or any of the uh, uh, bark, rocks, anything. So the blade, since the blade's pulling through, you don't want it to pull through dirt. And uh, with that being said, it's great if, for certain instances, but you will have a little groove on this right hand side, of this, this side of the board, a little indent. I know you're gonna plane the board and stuff, but anyways, I don't want the debarker. It costs money, I don't need it. I use brand new blades. Another thing about this particular machine is that it has the, I completely lost thought, but it has the diesel engine versus the gasoline engine. And I would say that the longevity of the diesel engine versus the gasoline engine is definitely the way to go. Um, that's the reason I sold my last machine is because I had a gasoline engine, had 273 hours before I sold it. I sold it for $29,000. You can buy the LT40 um, standard for $26,795. Add the wide head, you know, for $795, you'd be at $27 something. Um, and, you know, I sold my last machine for $29,000. That was right before, you know, it used to be $30,000. It went up since I got it, but then then it dropped right after I sold the machine for twenty nine thousand. It dropped um, to twenty six seven ninety five. The LT forty wide super hydraulic sawmill. I think they're fifteen weeks out now before you can get one. So you have to order it. It's either a thousand or five thousand dollars. It always is a thousand dollars for me. I'm not saying I'm better than you or anything. I just know I purchased another machine a lot. Uh, Two years ago, it was a thousand dollars in. It was a thirty thousand dollar price point or twenty eight thousand dollar price point. Um, I had to put a thousand dollars on this. They made the machine, picked it up, had to give them forty grand, cashier's check, straight out of the bank account. <laughs> it hurt. So this is the LT forty super hydraulic sawmill. Um, since I'm already in twelve minutes, I'll just continue to go over it. I'm sure you want to see it. Like, I really just wanted to see the uh, machine and uh, kind of measure cut on it. So I'm 100% portable and I'm, uh, I have to keep my machine in a storage unit. I keep it clean. It's brand new, so it's super clean. But whenever I, I already cut walnut on it and, uh, it was really dirty, so you know I took it to the car wash and got it really clean because I wanted to tighten the dry belt. Tighten the dry belt. You take off a bunch of bolts right there, and you can tighten the dry bolt in there. I mean, the drive belt, and that's really key because brand new machine, the belt stretch. Will told me to do it the first five hours, and that's what I'm doing. I have three hours on the machine right now. You want to see what the slabs. It cut these on its first day at work. All right. 32 inches wide, 15 feet long, no issues. Nice and flat. I started with the 740, 747 blades on the initial outer cuts. Terrible blade, it dived. I put my standard four degree blade in and uh, it cut nice and flat. And I usually use a 10 degree blade. I love the 10 degree. I have three other units, not just these two. You know, trailer stays here, and then you know, sawmill stays next door. Um, he's actually wanting a different slab, so that's still, that's still available. Here's some wood. I don't want to take too much time on the wood. This is primarily sawmill, but that is the byproduct of the sawmill. How are you gonna move that log? How are you gonna get the slabs? Where are you gonna put the slabs? You need to store them for two years. They need to dry. You're gonna put them in a kiln. They need to stand in sticks, you know, stickers, before you put them in a kiln. This is a sawmill, going on 15 minutes. Sorry for the rambling. Um, I don't know everything about sawmills. 
Um, I started selling wood seven years ago off other people's sawmills and buying wood and selling it and started saving it up and I you know, bought that first machine, sold it, got this one. Get the diesel engine. If you get a diesel engine, this is a machine you can keep for 20 years. You just my last gasoline engine, it would have lasted forever too. These machines last generations. You see these old wood misers still cutting. Buy right. Cry once. That's my philosophy. I've gone through four power washers. Well, on the fifth one, you're gonna buy another three hundred dollar red power washer. Or you're gonna go buy a thousand dollar red, a uh, thousand dollar power washer. You know, there's the chainsaws. You know, six sixty one. I've gone through a four. I've gone through three four sixty ones. Or I believe that's what they are. Four sixty ones. I haven't sold that one yet. But and then the three eleven. I've gone through three of them too. Um, two of the three elevens old employee in a home premier repair LLC. I don't do that anymore. I did that for 12 years. Um, my own business. You put bad gasoline in the, in the machine. This is the LT40 super hydraulic wide sawmill. And then you can adjust these. Tow boards, you can adjust these. If you have a taper log, you wanna adjust that situation. You know, I cut myself. I'm always cutting myself. Um, like with metal and sharp objects not like with knives and shit this will clamp the log you gotta take these fenders off um you know silly guy you know up in Missouri they, you know they just they're gonna take this fender off whenever they pulled the machine this way you know you can raise the head and you think you're clear there but that thing right there is gonna scrape here anyway he's got a few scratches the machine you know will get wear and tear so my first recommendation whenever you start getting scratches and stuff like that you get all these chips the paint starts flaking you get more chips then you start flaking put these little felt pads right here you got this screw it's gonna always ding on it felt pad you know they cut this one off but still put a felt pad wherever that's going to land felt pad same same situation over there if it would be technical i'm actually going to put one right here these are my last machine this is a big old metal spot metal rust water rust more paint now if you want to sell this machine and buy a new one in two years you want to get an lt70 you know treat it like it's a lamborghini you know yeah you know my philosophy is the only thing that needs to touch this sawmill is wood. Don't let anybody, you know, clean the rails, you know, like it's all dusty, you know, scratching all that. I use the blower. I use a piece of wood. I'll show you what I use. I don't have a better one. Just a piece of wood to clean out the sawdust. Keep it clean. So, recommendation, felt pad. Put a felt pad underneath here. You know, I I, I wanted to put one, you know, initially I said, no, it's just gonna raise, you know, the level. It's actually not, it's just gonna sink down eventually. But I have a felt pad on it now. But my first initial run, you know, I didn't, I didn't wanna do that. But now I do. It is gonna get scratched. That's the bottom line. But let wood scratch it, let logs scratch it. Whenever you load in the log, make sure these are up. If you have a really big log, like I have sometimes, these logs can fall off. If you have that cat track that most people have, that cat track's right here. Whenever I take this to locations, like canyons and shit, I bought them out. Not, I haven't bought them out, bought them out on my last machine. I'm, I, I'm very cautious about that. I'm gonna make sure this is up in travel mode. Not necessarily this being up. This can be down, actually. But if this is all the way over here, then this arm will be down and you're gonna bottom out, you're gonna fuck some stuff up. Excuse my language, I'm sorry I said that. Shouldn't have said that. Kid friendly video. But that's just the honest truth. So 
take care of your machine so you can sell it. My last one used to have these little plastic things. They're welded, you know, so you don't have to worry about sawdust getting in there. You know, ants are gonna get in these holes. You got ants. Travel hook, you gotta put that down. Wherever this travel hook's down, and you have these loading arms down, you have a funky log. That fun when this is down, that funky log can kind of protrude over here, even into this right here. You can knock that over. So if that is the case, you wanna make sure whenever you put that log on, you're not lifting that log on and this, you know, has a big old crotch over here and you're, you're pinching this. The last machine, I pinched this and broke that weld. I welded that back and you gotta remember, if you weld on the machine, you need to disconnect the battery. Very key, disconnect the battery. I didn't, I'm saying I disconnected the battery on my last machine before I welded it. If you're ever gonna weld this machine, disconnect the battery, you don't wanna fry the computers. Anyways. I disconnected the battery, welded it. Lesson learned. You know, I put the scratches on my last machine. Other thing I did, you know, I've, I've cut these rollers before. You're going, you think you're good? You're gonna cut one of these rollers. I guarantee you, you'll cut one of these. You'll cut into these on accident. You'll cut into that on accident. You want Whenever you're going, you wanna make sure these are below the bed level. You want to make sure these are up. Whenever you're handling the log, you want to make sure these are up so that it's not going to fall. This is a dangerous spot to sit where I'm at. Saw heads coming right here. You don't want to be right here. Watch my other videos. Watch, you know, watch what I do. So that is my, you know, I almost fell on my booty. That's what I have to say regarding sawmill. Preventative things you can do. Just increase the, uh, you know, just keep it looking good. Don't wash it all the time. Use a blower. Sorry for the jerkity video. Um, I don't have, I couldn't find any videos that would just like look over the machine. Most of them have this cool music going and all these edited videos. Uh, I won't edit my videos. I am working all the time. It is 1 o'clock right now. 1 a.m. And this is a typical night. I wanted to get this, you know, all I, it's all lubed up. It's ready to go. Three hours. It's right. I'm cutting walnut Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm literally cutting walnut every single day. The rest of the year. These were cut on my last uh, machine. That is the LT40 Super Hydraulic Sawmill. Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. God bless you guys. Love one another and be kind to each other. I want this to be a good place for people to look at sawmill content and if you ever want to talk about anything sawmill related you know be respectful don't call me right now i would answer <laughs> but so, no like no no this video won't be produced for 30 minutes i'll be sleeping but that's my number if you ever want to get a hold of me <clears throat> lt40 super hydraulic sawmill Thumbs up. God bless you guys.